derision. If you don't know, what can derision? Come on, come on, come on, come on.
Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, they are your fruit. They are your fruit. In this, in this chapter of Luke, if we look, if we back up and we look at verses 1 through 5, we'll see that the tone of, of the chapter is repentance. And if I can, real quick, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, I just want to read to you verses 1 through 5 that lead up to 6, so that 6 will make a little bit more sense to you. Is that, is that all right? So, beginning at chapter 13, it says, About this time, Jesus was informed that Pilate had murdered some people from Galilee as they were offering sacrifices at the temple. In other words, Pilate came into the church while they was having an offering and murdered a bunch of believers, okay? Are you with me? Yes, sir. Do you think those Galileans were worse sinners than all the people from Galilee, Jesus asked? Is that why they suffered? Not at all. And you will perish too, unless you repent for your sins, or repent of your sins and turn to God. And then he turns and he talks about another uh, situation that occurred. He says, and what about the 18 people who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them? Were they the worst sinners in Jerusalem? No. And I tell you again that unless you repent, you will perish too. Right. So what, what Jesus is doing is he, he is dismissing the idea that a human tragedy was, was God's judgment on especially bad sinners. Okay, he's dismissing that, that idea that just because somebody is worse or, or does worse things than the other person, that when tragedy occurs, that, 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 is, that, is, uh, that is representation of God's judgment. Okay, but, but, and he doesn't even deal with the, the, the folks that was in the church because we, we realize that, that it, it is a contradiction of itself for us to, for us to say that uh, the, the people in the church were, were actually uh, uh, sinners because we, we know that they're not sinners. But he, t he takes that and he, and he makes a comparison between that and people that his audience believe to be sinners. And he, and he doesn't even address the fact that they were believers, but he, he addresses the fact that you must repent or, or you will perish. He makes the fact that you must repent or you will perish because that is the point. That is the point that he is trying to make. And that's, that's the tone for, for this chapter. That's the tone for what he's about to go into when, he, when he's telling this parable about the fig trees. He's, he, when, when, when you're reading this verses 6 through 9, the best way to look at it is to have repentance in mind. Amen? Amen? So, so we're dealing with fig trees. We're dealing with fig trees. And verse 6, verse 6, he says, Then Jesus told this story. A man planted a fig tree in his garden and came again and again to see if there was any fruit on it. But he was always disappointed. Okay, so, so there, is a, there is a significance behind the fig tree. There's a significance behind the fig tree. And, and fig trees were grown and planted for a purpose. They were grown and planted for a purpose, for the purpose of producing fruit. Okay, it was planted and produced, all right, for the purpose of producing fruit. And, and fig trees, the thing about fig trees is you can, you can come into a, a vineyard or a garden any time of the year and you can find fruit on a fig tree. All right, they can be harvested up to four times a year. And in the Old Testament, uh, fig trees or fruit trees were a symbol of godly living. Okay, so, so Jesus is using, he's using this fig tree as an illustration of making, it, making a comparison between the fig tree and us. Okay, so, so something that we have in common with the fig tree uh, is that we have a purpose. Okay, and, and our primary purpose is to worship and glorify our creator, God. Okay, and, and that's according to Isaiah 43 and 7. Now, now secondly, uh, our purpose, another purpose that we have is to bear fruit. And when I say bear fruit, in other words, we, we, are, we are to be examples, okay? And to bear fruit means to be useful or to be helpful or to be productive with the knowledge of Jesus Christ, okay? In other words, we, we should be taking up space with the knowledge that Jesus has given us, okay? So, so, so now, now dealing, with, dealing with the fig tree, dealing with the fig tree, now we said that, that, that you should be able to find fruit on the fig tree all year long. That means no matter if it's the winter, if it's the spring, if it's the summer, or if it's the fall, you should be able to find some fruit on the fig tree. Now, I know that there's only four major uh, seasons 
Uh, but but living down here in Florida, there, there is another season that I'm sure we all uh, have, have been familiar with. That's hurricane season. Okay, and, and when hurricane season comes around, uh, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not too sure if everybody's uh, if everybody's born and raised in Florida, but I know somebody has experienced some hurricanes and some storms. And, and, and if you if you ever have to list, uh, live through or experience a hurricane, you'll know that during a hurricane the power lines are down, that the phone lines are down. So if, if, you, if you don't have any candles in your house, you won't be able to find your way or see your way in your own house. Uh, when you're trying to call somebody, you will find you will find yourself disconnected from other people. I'm talking about during during a hurricane, during a hurricane season, and it just seems like during a hurricane season. It's like a, it's a storm occurring like every other week. I'm talking, I'm talking like, I'm not talking about no little storms either. I'm talking about some big storms. And I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to get you to see something if you just bear with me a little bit, a little bit longer. But, 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 but the thing about the storms that, that, that are arising in your life, and I'm not just talking about no little storms. I'm talking about, I'm talking about your car breaking down and you're not being able to make that commute to Tampa or Orlando to get, get, to get to work. I'm not talking about little storms. I'm talking about big storms like, like you losing a loved one, okay, and, and, and somebody that's close to you, and, and, you, and you really, really could, could deal with losing somebody right then in, in that point in your life. All right, I'm talking about bigger storms, and, and, but as long as we're anchored in him, uh -huh. We can still produce fruit in the midst of the storm. Right. And, and, and that's the point. When I say that, that, that you should find fruit on a fig tree, no matter what season it is, no matter what month it is, no matter what that, that fig may be going through, no matter what you may be going through, when the gardener comes by, he should be able to find some fruit on your tree. All right, All right so I, I, I've, had, I've had to pray for people. When I wanted somebody to pray for me, yeah. All right. uh, I, I have had folk call me and say that they've had somebody die, and, and I need you to go see about them. And, and I can't say, no, I need somebody to come see about me. No, I got to go, and I got to go see about them, yeah. okay? And, 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 and I know I'm not the only one who's been there. I, I, I've had to preach sometimes, and I, and, and I really didn't feel like preaching, and I'm just right. being honest. And, and I, I had to preach out of season sometimes, yeah. and, and when I didn't think God was really going to be able to use me in the state that I was in in my life, but, but because I was anchored in him, but because I was rooted, my tree was rooted. My fig tree is rooted in oh, Jesus. I, I was Thank able to you. bear good fruit. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. I was Thank able you, Lord. to bear good fruit. Thank you. Verse 7 and 8. Verse 7 and 8. We're going to look at that real quick. I'm going to get out of your way. Verse 7 and 8. So he says, Finally, he said to his gardener, I've waited three years and there hasn't been a single fig. Cut it down, cut it down, cut it down. It's just taking up space in the garden. The garden answered, sir, give me one more chance. Give it one more chance and, and leave it another year. And I'll give it special attention. Anybody ever had God give you special attention? My Lord. And plenty of fertilizer. He was going to give it the nutrients that it needs. Thank you, Lord. Okay, if we get, if we get fixed next year, fine. If, if we don't, then cut it down, then cut it down. Real quick, turn with me to Luke 3 and 7. Luke 3 and 7. Luke 3 and 7, real quick, real quick. Luke 3 and 7 is talking about John the Baptist. And it says, when the crowds came to John for baptism, he said, you brood of snakes, who warned you to flee God's coming wrath? Prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. Talking about showing some evidence. Uh -huh. Don't just say to each other, we're saved, or we're saved because we're descendants of Abraham. Okay, that, that, that means nothing to me. For I tell you, God can create children of Abraham from these very stones. And th this is the key verse right here. Even now, the acts of God's judgment is poised and ready to sever the roots of the trees. Yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. And then if you keep reading, you'll see that everybody's asking, what should we do? What should we do? And then he, John goes on to tell them that, that they, should, they should basically bear fruit, that they should give their clothes. If they have two jackets, they should give one to someone who doesn't have it. And if you're a tax collector, that you should, you, should, you should deal fairly with individuals. And he's basically just telling them that you must repent 